Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this lesson, we will introduce the factory method design pattern. This is an important creational design pattern, ideal for scenarios where flexible object creation is needed. Imagine you are a hiring manager at a large company responsible for hiring suitable candidates for different positions. You can't possibly interview all the candidates yourself, so you need to delegate interviews to different colleagues based on the position. For example, technical positions are interviewed by the technical lead, and marketing positions are interviewed by the marketing lead. This way, you can focus on management and coordination rather than the interviews themselves. Now, let's look at the definition of the factory method. Simply put, the factory method design pattern is a creational design pattern that defines an interface for creating objects, but lets subclasses decide which class to instantiate. In other words, the factory method defers the instantiation process to the subclasses. Wikipedia explains the factory method as follows. In class-based programming, the factory method pattern is a creational design pattern. It uses factory methods to handle the problem of creating objects without specifying the exact class of the object that will be created. This is achieved by defining factory methods in an interface, implemented by subclasses, or by implementing the factory method in a base class and optionally overriding it in derived classes. The factory method design pattern usually includes the following components. 1. Product defines the interface for products. 2. Concrete product implements the product interface. 3. Creator declares the factory method that returns a product object. 4. Concrete creator implements the creator interface and the factory method returning instances of concrete products. So why should we use the factory method design pattern? Here are a few benefits. 1. Decoupling the creation process separates the creation and usage of objects, reducing code coupling. 2. Enhanced flexibility. Inheritance and polymorphism make it easy to extend new classes without modifying existing code. 3. Improved code maintainability. Centralizes object creation logic in the factory method, making the code easier to maintain and extend. To better understand this pattern, Let's implement a factory method in Java using the hiring manager example. First, we define an interviewer interface and create two classes that implement this interface, a developer and a community executive. Here, interviewer is equivalent to the product in the factory method and developer and community executive are the concrete products. Next, we create an abstract hiring manager class that includes an abstract factory method make interviewer and an interview method take interview the take interview method calls the make interviewer factory method to create a specific interviewer and then conducts the interview this hiring manager is equivalent to the creator in the factory method then we create two concrete hiring manager classes development manager for hiring developers and marketing manager for hiring marketing personnel here Development Manager and Marketing Manager are equivalent to the concrete creators. Finally, the client can use these concrete hiring manager classes to conduct interviews. We instantiate a Dev Manager and a Marketing Manager, letting them handle their respective hiring tasks. So in what scenarios should we use the factory method design pattern? When a class has some general processing logic, but the specific subclass can only be determined at runtime, the factory method pattern can be used. In other words, this pattern is useful when the client does not know which specific subclass needs to be instantiated. In conclusion, the factory method design pattern defines an interface for creating objects, allowing subclasses to decide which class to instantiate. This encapsulates the details of object creation, making the code more flexible and maintainable. In practice, we can use the factory method pattern to dynamically create different types of objects, enhancing code extensibility and readability. Thank you for watching today's video. If you found this video helpful, remember to like it and subscribe to the Byte Vigor channel so you won't miss more exciting content in the future. See you in the next video.